Previously on Mad About Superheroes, I reviewed the 90s revenge action film Hard to Kill. I wax nostalgic over its amazing martial arts action, its incredible cast, and its controversial star. Now showing on Mad About Superheroes, Hard to Kill Retro Review. Also available from Mad About Superheroes, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man Retro Review, and Batman 89 DC Comics Review. Wolverine first appeared in the last panel of The Incredible Hulk number 180 and with his first full appearance in Incredible Hulk number 181 in 1974. He was created for Marvel Comics by writer Len Wein and artist John Romita Sr. He was first drawn for publication by artist Herb Tremp. A year later, Wolverine joined a revamped version of the X-Men, where eventually writer Chris Claremont and artist writer John Byrne would play significant roles in Wolverine's development. As far back as the 1980s, there had always been talks of an X-Men film going into production, but nothing really came to fruition until the year 2000, after a very successful X-Men animated series laid the groundwork and smoothed the path for a live-action big-screen interpretation. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Among big-name stars, such as Mad Mel Gibson, dozens of actors were considered for the role of the adamantium-clawed mutant Wolverine. Doug Ray Scott was originally cast in the role in the first X-Men film directed by Brian Singer, but reshoots on Mission Impossible 2 prevented him from committing to the project. As luck or fate would have it, a little-known actor at the time, Hugh Jackman, auditioned and was cast in the star-making role. Lo and behold, Jackman's enthusiasm for the role endured nine films, the original X-Men trilogy, a trilogy of solo films, a cameo in the prequel X-Men First Class, as well as a more prominent role in the sequel Days of Future Past, and a bona fide fan service Berserker Rage action set piece in X Men Apocalypse. Fire! The dedication and genuine respect and love for the character Wolverine that emerges in Jackman's performance earns him an immeasurable amount of reverence from die hard fans of the X Men Marvel comics. Though Logan is still by far the best Wolverine film to date, some may argue that the true definitive Wolverine film has yet to be seen. However, most fans can agree that Jackman has embodied the essence of the character throughout the years. Feelings of alienation, anger, rage, as well as Wolverine's keen sense of duty, honor, and loyalty are all apparent in Jackman's portrayal of the character. The fact that Jackman is tall and has a slender muscular physique, while his comic book counterpart is short and has a more bulky muscular physique, is nothing more than a mere nitpick. For those of you hip to the scene, sit back and enjoy the nostalgia trip. For the uninitiated, <coughs> Mad About Superheroes presents Comic Book Movie Flashback, The Wolverine Trilogy. X-Men Origins Wolverine, directed by Gavin Hood, seems like an attempt to broaden the X-Universe with the introduction of more mutant characters for potential spin-offs, but doesn't take the time to develop these new mutants in any way relevant to the story, while showing a blatant disregard for its own continuity. With a script so inconhesive, it doesn't bother to transition Wolverine from being named James Howlett at the start of the film to suddenly taking on the name of Logan shortly after. Though Wolverine's rivalry with Sabretooth is handled more accurately than in the first X-Men film. His involvement in the Weapon X program is handled in a completely different way than it was depicted in X2. It isn't accurate to the Weapon X storyline featured in the Marvel comic books either. Instead of focusing on bigger character-driven development, we're given insight into trivial elaborations such as Wolverine's love of motorcycles, how he got his leather jacket, and how the name Wolverine comes from a tragic Native American myth. Other mutant characters such as Deadpool, Cyclops, Emma Frost, and The Blob are thrown into cater to fan service, but are handled so poorly it's more of a fan disservice. The relationship between Wolverine and Silver Fox feels forced. Gambit is somewhat satisfying to see. He has a great action sequence that showcases his powers, but he's yet another thrown in character that isn't really integral to the plot. Hugh Jackman gives an all-out performance as Wolverine as always, and Liv Shriver matches him scene for scene as Sabretooth. 
It's just unfortunate that the script wasn't on par with their performances. The action is fun to watch, but is very cartoonish at times. Realism is something the X-Men films had going for them, grounded with its subject matter of bigotry and hopeful coexistence. Unfortunately, Origins has no focus on the conflict between mankind and mutant kind. It's barely touched upon. Deadpool is surgically enhanced and becomes Weapon 11, given a mixed bag of powers extracted from various mutants. Though Ryan Reynolds is perfect for the part of the Merc with a mouth, his trademark wisecracks and potential to break the first wall are gone, because they've essentially neutered the character. X-Men Origins Wolverine is a convoluted mess of a film that doesn't concentrate on a cohesive story. All that said, it's a mess I still enjoy to watch, in a dopey Saturday morning cartoon way. Although I think that statement is a disservice to most Saturday morning cartoons. Objectively, it's a bad movie, but like a car crash or a train wreck, sometimes you just can't look away. You even know how to kill me. I'm gonna cut your head off. See if that works. <laughs> During the 80s, artist Frank Miller and writer Chris Claremont collaborated on a four-issue limited series titled Wolverine, a story arc director James Mangold's The Wolverine drew inspiration from. Though the film is influenced by the Claremont Miller story and utilizes most of its key characters, for better or worse, the film moves in its own distinct direction. Consumed with guilt and depression over killing his former teammate Jean Grey, taken over by her Dark Phoenix persona, Logan has vowed to keep his inner animal caged within, giving up the selfless hero routine for a life of solitude in the Canadian wilderness, sinking his sorrows into the bottom of a bottle until a group of hunters fail to properly track and execute a brown bear they've shot with a poison-tipped arrow. After Logan reluctantly ends the bear's suffering, he tracks the sole surviving hunter to a bar and gives the hunter a taste of his own medicine. When the bar patrons try to intervene, Logan is backed up by Yukio, a young mutant who has the ability to envision people's death before they occur. Yukio represents Bushida, the CEO of a technology company who's dying of cancer. Logan saved Bushido's life during the Nakasami bombing. Bushido wants Yukio to bring Logan to Japan. While in Japan, Logan learns Bushido's true motive for summoning him, his endeavor to cheat death a second time by transferring Logan's mutant healing ability into his frail ailing form. Granting him the immortality Logan feels has cheated him from a warrior's honorable death. Logan initially believes this task to be impossible. But he's soon proven wrong when Bushida's doctor, a mutant called Viper, injects a parasite into Logan's body that weakens his healing factor. Meanwhile, Bushido's death provokes a family feud that threatens the life of his granddaughter, Mariko, who's inherited all of her grandfather's massive wealth and power. Logan is thrust headfirst into a situation where he must embrace his true nature as a warrior and protect Mariko from overwhelming odds all while trying to prevent his healing ability from falling into the wrong hands. Though all the X-Men films are filled with continuity issues, the character of Wolverine is the most muddled. For example, three previous X-Men films established Logan has no memories of his past prior to 15 years. Yet in the Wolverine, he suddenly without explanation remembers the Nakasami bombing and Bushido. However, this is only a minor nitpick compared to the gaping plot holes in the aforementioned X-Men Origins Wolverine. Having played the role of Wolverine several times at this point, Hugh Jackman owns the role of the adamantium clawed mutant. Jackman just gets better and better, never phoning in the performance. Though I thought the high bar was X2, I'm happy to be wrong. The Wolverine explores Logan's inner turmoil over who he's meant to be versus who he wants to be. The film starts off with a much more grounded tone than its predecessors, but unfortunately that tone is not maintained by the film's third act, which is a cartoonish departure from what was established in the first two acts of the film. Personally, I think a samurai sword fight between Logan and Mariko's father and a battle with a dozen ninjas would have been a preferable end game. Instead, we got a final battle between Wolverine and a giant mech version of the Silver Samurai. During his fight with his much larger adversary, Logan's trademark claws are severed, a powerfully effective and unexpected scene. The Wolverine makes good use of the popular post credit scene, with a well-executed attempt to ramp up expectations for X-Men Days of Future Past, which features the reunion of Magneto, Professor X, and Wolverine, 
Another bit of fan service reveals Logan's comic accurate costume, but unfortunately, this scene ended up on the cutting room floor, but was made available on the DVD release of the film as a deleted scene. Solid performances from a stellar cast, great action set pieces, and a character driven story make The Wolverine a very enjoyable experience. Though the PG-13 rating holds it back a bit, Hugh Jackman and director James Mangold took a big step in the right direction. And though we didn't know it at the time, the best was yet to come. What kind of monster are you? The Wolverine. Logan, directed by James Mangold, is loosely based on the comic book story arc Old Man Logan, featured in Wolverine issues number 66 through 72. Written by Mark Miller and illustrated by Steve McNiven. Akin to its source material, Logan is inspired by old westerns such as Shane, which is referenced within the film, and The Unforgiven. Metaphorically, Logan is a retired lawman who reluctantly picks up his guns for one last crusade. In his final installment in the X-Men franchise, Hugh Jackman, Logan, now past his prime and retired from the hero biz, spends his nights as a chauffeur and hustling for prescription drugs to help an ailing Professor X. Logan is soon charged with protecting and mentoring a young mutant named Laura. He quickly realizes she needs little protection, as her ferocity and mutant abilities are much like his own. Though Laura doesn't need protection, she's in desperate need of guidance. Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart are at their best, shining in their respective roles, as well as sharing an extreme amount of chemistry. The duo successfully elevate the iconic status of these fan favorite characters. A fitting final portrayal of Wolverine for Jackman, who delivers his most character driven performance in the role as a broken hero that's tragically lost his way. Logan's care and affection for Xavier speaks volumes in the film. After an implied incident that an alien Xavier and his unstable abilities inadvertently harmed or possibly killed his students, maybe even the X-Men themselves. An empathetic Logan is steadfast at Xavier's side. A similar incident occurs in the aforementioned Old Man Logan storyline, in which Logan is tricked by an illusion perpetrated by Spider-Man villain Mysterio into slaughtering his teammates the X-Men. X-23 is a character that first appeared in the X-Men Evolution cartoon series and was later incorporated into the X-Men comics. Originally first appearing as a teenager in both the cartoon series as well as the comic. Though a bit younger in the film, Laura is played exceptionally well by Daphne Keene. The script and Keene's interpretation of the character is extremely faithful to the source material. Created through a cloning process using Logan's DNA, Laura is essentially Logan's daughter. Though it's a long, uneasy road to that father-daughter moment, it's no less heartfelt to say the least. Keen impressively holds her own in the company of two accomplished actors. The family dynamic that's achieved between the leads is plausible and excellently played by all involved. The tenure invested in both characters by Stewart and Jackman and their portrayal of their characters in this film make their eventual death scenes very effective and extremely emotional. Logan's death was actually foretold in the previous installment, The Wolverine. But I'm always right. All I can see is one part of a person's life. The death. And I saw yours. So what did you see? I see you on your back. There's blood everywhere. You're holding your own heart in your hand. X-24, another clone of Logan, is sent to capture Laura and eliminate all that stand in his way. Which leads to X-24 killing Professor X and eventually Logan himself. X-24 has all of Logan's strength, powers, and ferocity, but none of his virtue. Which provides interesting insight into what Logan could have been twisted into 
had he not fought so hard to hold on to his humanity. Steve Merchant does an excellent job as Caliban, a mutant with the ability to track other mutants. Caliban helps Logan take care of Xavier and is Logan's only friend and unfortunately is forced to use his abilities against his friends. Boyd Holbrook gives a solid performance as Donald Pierce, the leader of the Reavers, a group of cybernetically enhanced soldiers sent to retrieve Laura. The R rating permits the film to indulge in an excess of violence and bloodletting. Wolverine is most commonly associated with per the source material, which establishes a much darker tone than any other previous X-Men film. Logan definitely goes its own direction, but stays true to what's come before in both cinema as well as the printed page. Logan is gritty, violent, dramatic, action-packed, and most importantly, heartfelt. Logan is thus far the best version of the character to grace the silver screen. Do you remind you of anybody? I'm a fan, by the way. Thanks for letting your geek flag fly with Mad About Superheroes. Please help the channel grow by hitting the like button, sharing this video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, please visit Mad About Superheroes homepage and check out more of my content.